Hello, this is Susan with Susan Monroe Art, and this is my husband, John. John. John is learning how to draw using Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain. It's by Betty Edwards. Um, this is the Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain workbook, uh, which is what I've had. There's also just Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain book, um, which is a lot more text. This just has the exercises that you use to learn how to draw in it and some of the theory. And I like it because it gives you all the exercises. Here's the upside down drawing exercise we did last time. It gives you the picture to work from and then a space to do it on the opposite side all the way through to the end, um, all her exercises. So it's a really great book. Um, I went on Amazon to get it and it cost about $100 because I don't think it's in print anymore. So don't go to Amazon. I got it on eBay for about $6. So go check it out on eBay if this is the book you want. Of course, you can always find the Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain book, not the workbook, in your bookstore. And one of the great things about the book is it has this viewfinder in it. Um, which you'll use in a lot of the drawing exercises, and we are going to use it in the drawing exercise today. I added this white paper around the edge to make it a little more stiff. It's just a piece of like, what would you call that? Plastic. Plastic. Piece of plastic um, in the back of the book, and you can see it has little crosshairs in the middle, and you can see what it looks like when you don't have the, the paper attached to it. And you are going to use this today, John Monroe. Okay. I give that to you, um, and we're going to learn how to draw a hand. You're going to do a drawing that you're going to love today. Okay. It's going to be beautiful. Are right. you ready? I am ready. Let's go. All right. Hello again. I'm back. Even though we said we were going to start. John just um, reminded me that uh, he does not know which eye is his dominant eye. Your dominant eye is the one that does most of the seeing for you. You might not realize you have a dominant eye, but you do. And in this exercise coming up, you're gonna shut one eye to draw, um, to take away your binocular vision, I mean, your vision with two eyes. And if you've seen painters on movies and things, a lot of the time that they, they show them and they've got one eye shut and they're holding their thumb up or something. Well, you can really do that to help you draw. They're shutting their non-dominant eye and looking through their dominant eye. So I'm gonna tell you how to find your dominant eye. Um, take your finger, hold it out at arm's length, and then put it up against, like I'm looking at the window, I'm mm -hmm. putting it where the, the window panes cross mm -hmm. right here. Whoops, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm keeping both eyes open, I have one shut. And put it right over top of that or against something where you can tell it's got a definite position. Mm -hmm. Now I'm gonna shut one eye. Mm -hmm. All right, my finger has stayed in that place where the window panes cross. Yep. Shut my other eye, well my finger moved way over to the left. Mm -hmm. Hey, did you see that? Yes, I did. My do my dominant eye is my right eye. Your dominant eye is your right it eye? Did, it did not move. So you can find two ways to tell which is your dominant eye. With this. The, the eye that you um, shut, and you shut one eye and then your finger stays where you originally put it. Mm -hmm. This is my dominant eye. The finger didn't move. Or I, sh I shut the other eye and my finger moved to the left. Whichever direction your finger moves, that's your dominant eye. It moved to the left, my left eye is my dominant eye. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? Yes, makes sense. Okay, so you're gonna need your dominant eye uh, for this next exercise, and now you know how to find it. Your right eye dominant, mm -hmm. and left eye dominant. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> okay, here we go. Okay, so for the first exercise, if you have the workbook, um, you'll use the, the viewfinder that's in the back of the workbook. If you don't have the workbook, I just took a piece of glass out of a picture frame. It doesn't have to be this big. This is bigger than I'd really like it to be. But I took a, uh, the glass out of a picture frame and then I taped the edges so I won't cut myself on it. You see the viewfinder has these crosshairs in the middle. You need crosshairs and you're gonna need a dry erase marker. So I'm gonna take my dry erase marker and I'm going to make my own viewfinder by making the crosshairs. Looks pretty good. Okay. 
there are my crosshairs. So now what we are gonna do is you're gonna put your hand, your, if you're right-handed, you'll take your left hand. If you're left-handed, you will take your right hand and put it under the viewfinder. And I want you to put it, do not put it like this. Put it in a position maybe where you can see a fingernail or two, where you are, and have some foreshortened views of your fingers. So not like this, not like that. Let's bend your finger some, and it's. I think it's best to be able to see a fingernail in there. And you're gonna center the crosshairs on your hand. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then you're gonna take your dry erase marker, and you are gonna shut your non-dominant eye. You're gonna be looking through your dominant eye. So you are gonna shut your left eye. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna shut my right eye. And I am going to use my dry erase marker just to trace around the lines of my hand. I want you to think of it like contour drawing like we did last week. You're just following those edges around and then where there's a crease in the middle, you're gonna go in. You don't have to draw every crease, but you can if you want. Right. Right, you can get started if you want. Okay. And what we're doing here is we are flattening your picture frame. You know, a drawing is representing a 3D area in a two-dimensional space. So your hand is three-dimensional and we're flattening that space into a two-dimensional space, which is your glass. You're going to be learning how to draw things the way they really are instead of the way you think they are, the way your brain tells you they should be. Okay, great. Once you're done, you're gonna take your uh, viewfinder and just set it down on a piece of white paper if you don't have a white tabletop so you can take a look. I mean, that's a pretty awesome picture of your hand. Mm -hmm. So do you see now how, if an artist is drawing this, he is looking at the flattened form of the shapes, not the three-dimensional shape, you know, how the shape really looks in a two-dimensional form. Mm -hmm. Like a photograph takes a three-dimensional space and makes it into a two-dimensional, image. You just did the same thing with this by putting that three-dimensional image on the two-dimensional picture plane. So great job. All right. Are you ready for our next exercise? We're going to get ready and you are going to draw your hand, uh, not on the, uh, not on the viewfinder. Okay. Okay. Here we go. So in our next exercise, we are going to make what's called toned ground. And that is filling it in with the, a graphite, uh, background. Okay, so let me show you what I'm talking about. You're gonna need a piece of white paper, and I have taken my paper, and I have taped off with some washi tape um, the dimensions of, of the viewfinder. You don't have to do this. I just did it because I wanted to, all right? You're also gonna need a pencil, or if you have a, you can get these at the craft store, um, a graphite bar, I just happen to have one, and that makes, making a toned ground, toned background very easy. Now, we are going to um, use our pencil or our graphite stick to shade the, bath, the background and even, even shade. If I use my graphite stick, I can just do like this. Look how easy that is. I'm going to go like this. And then once I get it covered all over, I'll take a paper towel and I'm gonna use my finger and I'm gonna smooth it out as much as possible, rub it in, okay? Or you can do it with a pencil, take sort of the edge of the pencil. And then take your paper towel and just smooth it all in there. So, get to work.
So why do we do this? What does this do? It's going to be like there are light, medium, and dark tones to every drawing. This is going to be our medium tone. You're going ahead and just putting in your medium tone so you don't have to work with it later. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to look at my crosshairs here, look at my crosshairs here, and anywhere where my finger or hand crosses these crosshairs, I'm going to put a corresponding mark on this. It's like graphing. You're transferring those mm -hmm. important points. So let's see. This is a little less than halfway. I could put it could even measure it with my pencil. Look at that. Ding. Boom. So there's one spot where it'll have to cross. And then I'm going to do about here. And then it looks like about here again. And I'm going to do looks like here. Okay, so go ahead and mark the places where your drawing crosses your um, crosshairs. Now what we're going to do, here you take this, is you're going to use these dots as anchor points to transfer the drawing of your hand onto this uh, colored round. So, I'm looking carefully at my edges. I'm looking at the distances, the distance between my crosshairs, and my objects. You don't have to be a slave to the, the markers that you've put on here. If something's not looking right, feel free to change it, but they will be very helpful. So this, I'm drawing from here to here. Should go down like that. You may need to press a little harder to get a dark enough line. I'm going to here. And I'm trying not to think of like, oh, this is my fingernail. This is my nail. I'm trying to lose myself in just following the lines so you're just thinking of them as lines. As lines, right. If you have to erase something, erase and then rub the ground back in. All right, you want to get started? Yep. All right, I'll work over here. You won't really be able to see mine. But. I'm looking at the relationships too. Like this part of my thumb, ooh, it should be about even with that line on my hand. Now look at this that you've drawn. Is that as wide as that? <laughs> no, so just you need just be aware of the spatial relationships. It's, it's your first time. Now, here, rub it back in. Okay. Now I want you to, to just take a look and compare generally. If you see something that you think is too thin or too thick or sticks out too much, whatever, just gently make any corrections. Remember, you don't have to be a slave to your marks. You good with everything else? Mm -hmm. All right. Now we're going to take, this is a kneaded eraser. You can use whatever eraser you have. And we're going to erase the ground all around the outside of the drawing. The drawing, right. So your drawing is going to pop out at you now.
All right. So, John, you want to fix yeah, this? Yeah, I think this is, it, it bows out where I'll you can see show how you figured here. it out. Because here, put it over. I put it over because I wanted to see the size, but all of a sudden I realized this is jumping way out, so it needs to go more inward. Well, now that you see how to correct it, why don't you go ahead and correct it? Why don't you draw the line first? Oops, can I show you something real quickly? So look, here we have it right over at the top. Pretty good. This is the one part that really comes out. Look at this mm -hmm. shape. That is the shape you want. Don't don't worry about this. In mm -hmm. your mind, keep that shape. And then that's what you want to draw. But I want you to be very proud because look at, I mean, that's really good. That's very close to what your drawing was, all right? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put in the highlights and the shadows. So what you've done with this toned ground is you've put in all the um, middle tones, middle colors. So when you're drawing a picture, if you want it to look three-dimensional, you have to have highlights, you have to have shadows, and then you have the medium tones in the middle. That's what this is. This is all the medium tones. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna put your hand all right, I'm gonna put it back in the positions it was. And now I'm going to use my eraser. I'm gonna observe where there are areas of highlight. I see highlight here, highlight here. When you say highlight, what do you mean? That's where the light hits your hand. So it's lighter, not darker. Where it's lighter, mm -hmm. okay. I see light here, I see some light here, mm -hmm. I see some light here, here. I'm going to take my eraser, I watch, and I'm going to erase the ground where I see that light. I'm going to have to keep going back and forth. Mm -hmm. Okay, see, I it doesn't, my whole thumb isn't, and the light just hits it on one side. Where there's a crease, there's also going to be a shadow. See how there's a shadow in there? Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to just erase up and down because I want to keep that shadow mm -hmm. where the crease is. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Now we're going to go in with your pencil and we are going to put shade, make it darker. So you'll have three tones. You'll have a light, a dark, and a mid-tone on your hand. So I'm gonna look at my hand. It's really dark along that edge. So let me, when I darken something, I just gently will shade in. You can rub it with your finger a little bit to smooth the edges if you're not. You're not gonna be like going crazy. Just gently. Watch where the creases are. You might want to sh shadow in some more of those creases that you saw. I think in the book she says use a 4B pencil to do this. This is a 2B pencil. This is just all school pencils are 2B. Um, if you, uh, a 4B would make a much darker line. Uh, and maybe a thicker line so that the shading would look more pronounced, which would be nice to have, but we don't have one, so go with what you have. Use what we have. That's right. I'm to the point of even like I see on this side of my nail, there's a little shadow over here, but the highlight is right here. I didn't get that highlight, but every little thing you notice is gonna make a difference. Are you pleased with it? Mm -hmm. Hold your hand out the way. Okay, so you put 
shading. So I'm gonna show you what I see. I see shading along here. Mm -hmm. I would put. You see, there's an area of shadow, almost heart shaped, right there, along the edge of your hand here. And I'll tell you, this is see how the light's reflecting off your finger here. Mm -hmm. What's going to make that pop out is the shadow behind that. It's going to make it look more three-dimensional. Now hold your hand like this again. Yeah. See, so you see, there's an extra highlight right here. Mm -hmm. So let's add that in. So any time there's a highlight there's going to be an opposing shadow. If there's a highlight on this side, there's going to be a shadow on this side. Highlight, maybe if there's a highlight up the center, mm -hmm. then there's going to be opposing shadows probably on either side. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. And now I'm looking, I see a big highlight right here across your hand. Do you see that? Hold your hand flat in the light. The light's hitting right here, mm -hmm. where, so you could take that out. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. Are you pleased with it? Yep. I don't think you could have done that before. Nope, yeah, absolutely couldn't have. Nope, nope. So there is another exercise in drawing on the right side of the brain. If you like these exercises and you want to see John continue to learn, I'm so proud of you, <laughs> uh, to continue, continue to learn how to draw. If you want to learn to draw along with John, please subscribe to my channel and click the like button um, to show that you like my video and um, have fun drawing. I forgot one part. This is the part, my favorite part is I always like to peel the tape off and it'll have a really pretty defined edge that makes your work look really, I don't know, just gives a little something, something. That defined edge just really makes it look nice, I think. Here is a secret too. If you're pulling tape off of any piece of art, never pull it toward the art because if it rips your paper, it'll rip your art. Pull away. And then, of course, the most important thing. Oh, yeah. Signing it. Sign it and date it. So, yay. Good job. All right. Thanks, John. And bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Hello, this is Susan. Stop. <laughs>